United States and overseas in uh, the United Kingdom and also in France and other countries, the issue of prison radicalization was very real. All right, so we're uh, we're on the phone with Patrick Dunleavy, uh, a uh, a former executive in uh, the correctional systems in in New York uh, in uh, New York State, and uh, on the screen with me right now is Richard Horowitz. All right, uh, an attorney, uh, accomplished uh, certainly attorney, as well as private investigator. Hey, Rich, um, you, did you want to ask uh, Patrick any questions or any comments? Well, yeah, Pat, if uh if you could uh, maybe give uh, some more details of the extent of the problem of radicalization in U.S. prisons. I think that would be helpful. Sure. Well, we found that the um, issue of uh, prison radicalization was indeed a process that took place uh, often at the beginning of the individual's first uh, contact with law enforcement, his arrest. Uh, and then continued on through his time in county jail or city lockup, through his time in state prison, and then post-release, uh, when he was on probation or parole, the process continued. Um, it wasn't just a one-step uh, radicalization, but it was a, a process that took place over a period of time. So we're, uh, we're on the phone with, uh, just in case you're picking this up late in the program, with Patrick Dunleavy uh, and um, Richard Horowitz. Uh, Richard has asked Patrick to come on uh, on the program today and talk because we have been reviewing on, on IGTV the February 2012 Triangle uh, Center report out of uh, Chapel Hill. And specifically, Richard was talking about, you know, prison doesn't seem to... Uh, doesn't seem to be a major source of Islamic radicalization. Uh, and they source this in the report to the House testimony of uh, Bert Yusim, a uh, professor of sociology at Purdue University and researcher um, that's out there. Now, uh, Patrick is uh, certainly an accomplished law enforcement professional um, that has been in the correctional system for some time and has written a book, and his book is The Fertile Soil of Jihad, on how Islamic radicals are recruiting in prison. Um, and this kind of flies in the face of what's going on within this Triangle Report. Patrick, what I would follow up with, and I'd say, you know, in, in your research, all right, in your investigations, I guess, in the law enforcement field, those outside law enforcement call them research, all right, um... Have you found any manifestation outside of, of, of the, the prison walls that actually uh, grew or were seated inside prison and then found its way out into the streets? Oh, absolutely. Um, there was a case in uh, 2009, uh, what was entitled the, the Newburgh Four. Uh, those were four individuals, former inmates in New York State who were arrested for plotting to bomb synagogues and shoot down military aircraft with Stinger missiles. All four of those individuals, although they were in prison, never were in the same prison together. They met after they were released from prison at an Islamic center in Newburgh, New York. At that Islamic center in Newburgh, New York, as many as eight of the religious leaders in that mosque were also prison chaplains. And again, this plot took place after release. Wow, that's that that is quite revealing. So let me ask you uh, another follow up question to that. Would you say that uh, uh, these, these this radicalization uh, that's going on in the prisons is that just confined to New York City, or would you find that that's uh, more sprawling and you know uh, throughout the system? maybe New York State, New Jersey, you know, in the regional area? Uh, absolutely. Um, and it, it transcends um, um, state lines. Uh, you had the case in uh, Illinois of Michael Finton, who was a former inmate after he was released from prison, uh, received a sum of money from a Saudi individual to travel to Saudi Arabia, came back radicalized, and plotted to blow up a government building in uh, Illinois. Um, 
you've had the cases in uh, New Jersey, you had the paintball cases in um, Virginia, you had the case in um, Argonne, um, you had the case in the California Department of Corrections where uh, Kevin James actually recruited and trained and sent out parolees to attack uh, Jewish um, facilities as well as to rob gas stations for money for the uh, uh, Islamic cause. Well, that is that is quite revealing. And the, one of the reasons I asked you that, Patrick, is because the NYPD is taking quite a thumping in, in the media for uh, its more regional approach uh, to the security of the city. Um, some of that has to do with communication and things of that nature, but I think uh, uh, a lot of people that are involved in the security field would, would certainly you know, applaud them for looking beyond their their normal boundaries uh, in that particular area. Um, just maybe the communication needs to improve a little bit. Um, Patrick Dunleavy, thank you very much. We certainly would like to spend a lot more time with you on your book. Um, if you want to follow up us with that, uh, we'd certainly love to do that. All right. Uh, and... Um, uh, Rich, uh, we're just up on time. I've got another call coming in right after this, all right? Thank you both for your time being with us today, and we look forward to hearing uh, more from you, Patrick, if you've got the time, and Rich, we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Right. Thank you for all right. inviting me. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, appreciate it. All right, Rich, uh, great call, uh, great invite, and uh, we will see you next week. Thank you very much. All right, so, take care bye. now. All right, uh, so that is... Uh, that